the law of our lives. Spirit creates through law. The law is always mind in action. Mind cannot act unless intelligence sets it in motion. In the great universal mind, man is a center of intelligence, and every time he thinks, he sets mind into action. What is the activity of this mind in relation to man's thought? It has to be one of mental correspondence. That is, mind has to reflect whatever thought it cast into it. Wonderful as universal mind is, it has no choice but to create whatever thought is given it. If it could contradict that thought, it would not be a unit, since this would be recognizing something outside of itself. This is a point in truth which should not be overlooked. The one mind knows only its own ability to make whatever is given it. It sees no other power and never analyzes or dissects. It simply knows. And the reason why people do not understand this is that they have not realized what mind is. The ordinary individual thinks of mind only from the limitation of his own environment. The concept he has of mind is the concept of his own thinking, which is very limited. We are surrounded by an all-seeing, all-knowing mind, which is one and runs through all. The belief in the dual mind has destroyed practically all philosophies and religions of the ages and will continue to do so until the world comes to see that there is but one. Whatever name is given it, there is but one. It is this one that creates for us whatever we believe. Our thought operative through this one produces all our affairs. We are all centers in this mind centers of creative thought activity. There is nothing which appears in the manifest universe other than an objectified thought, whether it be a bump on your head, a growth on your foot, or a planet. It could not be there were it not made out of mind, for mind is all there is to make anything out of it. Whatever is made is made out of it. Nothing exists or can exist without a source from which it springs. We are not dealing with a negative as well as a positive power, not two powers, but one. A power that sees neither good nor evil as we see it. It knows only that it is all, and since it is all, it creates whatever is given it. From our limited standpoint, we often think of good and evil, not realizing that, as yet, we do not know the one from the other. What we call good today, we may call evil tomorrow. And what we think to be evil today, we may tomorrow proclaim as the greatest good we have known. Not so with the great universal power of mind. It sees only itself and its infinite ability to create. To the thinking person, this will mean much. He will see that he is no longer living in a limited universe, a world of powers, but that he is immersed in an infinite creative medium which, because of its nature, has to create for him whatever he believes. Jesus understood this and in a few simple words laid down the law of life. It is done unto all people as they believe. This is a great thing to keep in mind. It is done unto us. We do not have to do it. For it is done unto us of a power that knows itself to be all there is. Could we even believe that some material mountain would be moved? The power is there to do it. Without this belief, there is no real impulse for the creative mind, and we do not get an affirmative answer. We must realize more clearly that this great power has to operate through us. Man's Part Creative mind cannot force itself upon us because we have the power of self-choice. It recognizes us when we recognize it. When we think that we are limited or have not been heard, it must take that thought and bring it into manifestation for us. When we look about us and see nature so beautiful, lavish, and so limitless, when we realize that something, some power, is behind all and sees to it that plenty obtains everywhere, so that in all things manifest, there is more than could be used. And when on the other hand, we see man so limited, sick, 
sad and needy, we are disposed to ask this question. Is God good after all? Does He really care for the people of His creation? Why am I sick? Why am I poor? Little do we realize that the answer is in our own mouths, in the creative power of our own thought. The average person, when told the truth, will still seek some other way. God has already done for us in a mechanical way all that He can do. And having been given the ability, we will have to do for ourselves the rest. Yet the great power is always near, ready at any time to help. But we must use it according to its own nature in harmony with its laws. Man should learn that he himself is the center of this divine activity. Realizing this, he must seek more and more to utilize his own divine nature. And by so doing, he will come fully under the protection of the great laws that govern all life, manifest and unmanifest. Whatever man is, he must find that because he is made out of God, he must be of the same nature. This infinite one cannot know anything outside of itself, anything that would be a contradiction of its divine nature. Man's ignorance of his real nature binds him with his own freedom until he comes to see things as they really are and not as they appear to be. In the infinity of mind, which is the principle of all metaphysics and of all life, there is nothing but mind, and that which mind does. That is all there is in the universe. That is all there ever was or ever will be. This mind is acted upon by our thought, and so our thought becomes the law of our lives. It is just as much a law in our individual lives as God's thought is in the larger life of the universe. For the sake of clearness, think of yourself as in this mind. Think of yourself as a center in it. That is your principle. You think, and mind produces the thing. One of the big points to remember is that we do not have to create. All that we have to do is to think. Mind, the only mind that there is, creates. Few people seem to understand the nature of the law, and so think that they have got to do something even if it is only holding a thought, thinking or knowing is what does the thing. It will make it much easier for us when we realize that we do not have to make anything just to know that there is something back of the knowing which does the work for us. That person gets the best results who realizes that he can use this divine principle. He who can get the clearest concept of his idea and who can rely on mind to do for him keeping everything out of his thought that would contradict the supremacy of spirit or mind. By simply holding a thought, we could not make anything. But by knowing in mind, what cannot we do? Bondage and freedom. Never get away from the fact that you are surrounded by such a power. It is the principle of demonstration. It knows every thought. As we send forth our thought into it, it does unto us. The person who is ignorant of this law must by that ignorance be bound by his thought, by his human beliefs. One who understands will begin to break these ties that bind him. One by one, he will destroy every negative thought until at last he is able to think what he wants to think. And so he frees himself by the use of the same power that at one time bound him. We must destroy all thought that we would not see manifest and hold to that which we would see until we receive the affirmative answer. Never struggle. Mind makes things out of itself. There is no effort made. Don't think that there is so much to be overcome. Have only a calm sense of perfect peace as you realize that God is all and that you are using the perfect law and that nothing can hinder it from working for you. Many people are learning to do this, and no one has yet failed to demonstrate who has been steadfast, using the law in a consistent and persistent trust. All that we have to do is to provide the right mental and spiritual attitude of mind, and then believe that we already have, and the reward will be with us. We shall see it. 
The time will come when we will not have to demonstrate at all because we will be always living so near to the law that it will do all for us without much conscious thought on our part. So when you say, I am poor, sick, or weak, I am not one with the creative mind. You are using that creative power to keep yourself away from the infinite. And just as soon as you declare that you are one with God, there is a rushing out to meet you. As the father rushed out to meet the prodigal son, the spirit seeketh. But as long as your mind thinks in the terms of conditions you cannot overcome, the difficulty comes from our inability to see our own divine nature and its relation to the universe. Until we awake to the fact that we are one in nature with God, we will not find the way of life. Until we realize that our own word has the power of life, we will not see the way of life. And this brings us to the consideration of the use of the word in our lives. The word. The word was with God and the word was God. The word is nigh thee, even in thy own mouth that thou shouldst know it and do it. What does this mean? It clearly states that whatever power there is in the word, and it says that it is all power, is also in our own mouths. There is no avoiding the fact that the Bible claims for man the same power in his own life and his own world that it claims for God. In the lives of the majority, men do not realize that the word is in their own mouths. What word? Little do we realize that this word which they are so earnestly seeking is every word they hear, think, or speak. Do we who are endeavoring to realize the greater truths of life always govern our words? If any word has power, it follows that all words have power. It is not in the few moments of spiritual meditation that we demonstrate, but we bring out the possibilities of the hidden word when we are allowing our thoughts to run in any direction. Not in the short time spent in silence, but in the long hours stretching themselves into days, months, and years, are we always using the word. An hour a day spent in silent meditation will not save us from the confusion of life. The 51% of a man's thinking is what counts. It is easy when we are alone to brave the storms of life. Surrounded by our own exalted atmosphere, we feel the strength of the infinite. We rise in spirit. We think we are experiencing the ultimate of truth, that all things are ours. These moments in a busy life are well spent, but must unavoidably be brief. But what are the rest of the day? What of the busy streets of the marketplace and of all the daily contact with life? Do we then obtain? Do we keep on in the same even way? Or do we fall before the outer confusion of our surroundings? We are still creating the word and setting it afloat in the great ethers of life. Are these words creating for us? Yes. How necessary then to keep the independence of the solitude how seldom we do this. Few people indeed in the day in which we live are well poised. Where do we find the man who can live above his surroundings, who in his own thought can dominate all conditions and in the midst of the crowd keep his own even way and his own counsel? When we do meet with such a person, we will know him. For we shall find on his face the image of perfect peace. We shall detect in his bearing the ease and independence that comes only to the man who has found himself and who is centered not in the outer, but in the inner world. Such a character as this has the power to attract to himself all of the best in the world. He is a center toward which all else must gravitate. The atmosphere which he creates and with which he surrounds himself is one of absolute calm and peace. The world at once sees in this man a master and gladly sits at his feet. And yet this man who has risen above the thought of the world cares not that other people should sit at his feet. He knows that what he has done all may do. And he well knows that all the teaching in the world will not produce another such as he. He knows that it is not from the teaching 
but from the being that true greatness springs. So this man does not go around teaching or preaching. He simply is. The man who has arrived. The man who has arrived will realize that he has done so in the midst of an outer confusion. He will be the one who has gone into the silence for strength and has come out into the world equipped with power from on high. But that light which he has received must be kept burning. Not alone in the silence, but in the busy throng must all of us find the way of life. Our every thought creates. For the majority of us, these thoughts come in everyday affairs, some of which are very trivial. But these too will be demonstrated. We have missed the whole point, unless we have learned so to control our thought that time and place make no difference. The power we have within us. We have within us a power that is greater than anything that we shall ever contact in the outer. A power that can overcome every obstacle in our life and set us safe, satisfied, and at peace, healed and prosperous in a new light and in a new life. Mind. All mind is right here. It is God's mind, God's creative power, God's creative life. We have as much of this power to use in our daily life as we can believe in and embody. The storehouse of nature is filled with infinite good awaiting the touch of our awakened thought to spring forth into manifestation in our life. But the awakening must be on our part and not on the side of life. We, static, at the gateway of limitless opportunity in the eternal and changeless now, now is the day in which to begin the new life that is to lift us up to the greater expression of all that is wonderful. The word that we speak is the law of our life, and nothing hinders but ourselves. We have through ignorance of our real nature misused the power of our word, and behold what it has brought upon us, the very thing that we feared. But now it shall produce a new thing, a new heaven, and a new earth. Individual Ideas We find that in the universe every separate idea has a word, a mental concept behind it, and as long as that word remains, the thing is held in place in the visible world. When the concept is withdrawn, the idea in the visible melts away, disappears. It ceases to vibrate to the word, which is the law behind it. For when the word is withdrawn, the condensation of the ether that forms the word melts again into the formless. There was a time when the world was without form, and from the word alone all things were made that are made. When our word says that there is no longer life in our bodies, the life principle withdraws, and our bodies return to the substance from which they came. Here is the great mystery of life that we are able to use this creative word for whatever purpose we may desire, and that word becomes the law unto the thing for which it was spoken. And so in our lives, we might say that without our word was not anything made that was made. For we are given the power to sit in the midst of our lives and direct all their activities. There is no struggle and no strife necessary. All that we have to do is to know we must awake and with the glorified consciousness of an emancipated soul use our God-given power. The reason for the universe. This universe is the reason. First, of an infinite intelligence which speaks or thinks, and as this thought becomes active within itself, it creates from itself, at the power of its own word, the visible universe. We are living in a universal activity of mental law. We are surrounded by a mind which receives every impression of our thought and returns to us just what we think. Every man, then, is living in a world made for him from the activity of his thought. It is a self-evident proposition that mind must create out of itself, and this self being limitless, it follows that its creative power is without limit. Mind in Action 
Everything that we see is the result of mind in action. We all have a body and we have what is called a physical environment. We could have neither if it were not for the mind. The law implanted within us is that we need nothing except ourselves and this all-wise creative mind to make anything. And that just so far as we depend upon any condition, past, present, or future, or upon any individual, we are creating chaos because we are dealing with conditions and not with causes. Every living soul is a law unto himself, but of this great truth few people are conscious. It seems difficult for the race, which feels itself to be so limited, to comprehend the fact that there is a power that makes things directly out of itself by simply becoming the thing that it makes, and it does this by self-knowing. But we will not demonstrate until we see at least some of this, the greatest truth about life. We should realize that we are dealing with the principle that is scientifically correct. It will never fail us at any time, but is eternally present. We can approach the infinite mind with a depth of thought and understanding, knowing that it will respond, knowing that we are dealing with reality. Jesus, who saw this very dearly, laid down the whole law of life in a few simple words. It is done unto you as you believe. We do not have to do it. It is done unto us. It is done by a power that is all. Could we believe that a material mountain would be moved? It would be done unto us. But unless we do believe, there is no impulse for the creative power, and we do not receive. Life externalizes at the level of our thought.